gives us a calling, a dream, a vision. He doesn't always explain the reason for it and why you were particularly chosen. Uh, this Barry Phillips, a 10-minute tour, day number five of the tour portion in Vietzi, and he went out. So Yah speaks to you in a dream, a vision. Uh, he gives to you a calling, and he says to you, you're going to be greatly increased in wealth. I'm going to make you abundantly rich. We come up out of our vision state, or we awaken from this dream, and we're excited. We've already made our shopping list. Did it not ever occur to us to ask two questions? Number one, what was what is the reason of this increased wealth? What am I to do with this money? Is it for me? Is it for everyone else? Number two, by what process, trial, testing, endurance, why, what means of employment, uh, building a business, what work am I going to have to go through in order to get this accomplished? Sometimes we just get the idea, well, we're winning the lottery, and that's what he's going to do. All I have to do is buy a ticket. It rarely, if ever, works that way. So Yaakov meets Yahweh on the Temple Mount in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 28. He sees this ladder, the stairway. Angels are ascending and then descending. There's a changing of the guard. The territorial angels that had been with Yaakov up to this point are now going back upwards. Those that are assigned to him to go with him into the new region are coming down. That's my interpretation. A changing of the guard. Yah at the top, at the head of the stairway. What is the stairway? In Yochanan chapter 1, verse 51 Yeshua said, truly, truly, I say to you that from this time on, you shall see the messengers of heaven ascending and descending. The wording is the same as it is here in Bereshit, chapter 28, intentionally so. You shall see the messengers of Elohim ascending and then descending upon the son of Adam. Yeshua has just revealed to us there that he is, in fact, this ladder and that the messengers of the Most High have their orders and their assignments based upon him. He is the one who has authority over them, and the Father is at his head. So Yaakov responds with a standing column, calling this place the gate to the heavens. This is the house of Elohim, and he makes a vow. Here in the scriptures, it says in verse 20, Seeing Elohim is with me and has kept me in this way which I am going and has given me bread to eat and a garment to put on when I have returned to my father's house in peace. And Yahweh has been my Elohim. Then this stone which I have set as a standing column shall be Elohim's house. And of all that you give me, I certainly give a tenth to you. Other translations make this vow conditional by beginning it with the conditional word if. If you're with me, if you feed me, if you clothe me, if you give me a place to remain, if you are with me and bring me back, then I will do what I promise you. But ask Moshe, the, the promises, the callings, the assignments of Yah are not conditional. Yah calls. It's up to us to obey. And when it came to Moshe, Yah would not take no for an answer. He called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees. And because he obeyed, there was an incredible blessing placed upon him. Now he's given this blessing, this favor, this opportunity to Abraham's grandson, Yaakov. And Yaakov, it seems to me, is making this conditional. He's still wrestling, trying to figure this all out. He enters into the house of Levan. And Levine uses him, usurps him for his own benefit. He says as much in chapter number 30. Let's go there. Bear sheet, Genesis chapter number 30. And let's begin reading with verse 25. And it came to be when Raquel had born Joseph that Yaakov said to Levine, Send me on my way to go to my own place and to my land. 
Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you know yourself thy service which I have done for you. And Levon said to him, If I found favor in your eyes, please stay, for I have diligently watched that Yahweh has blessed me for your sake. Your talent, your skill, your ability, the blessing that is upon your life has benefited me, and I want you to stay. So he says, name your wages. Tell me how much it's going to cost me to keep you here. Yaakov said to him, you know, I have served you, how your livestock has been with me. For the little you had before I came has increased greatly. And Yahweh has blessed you since my coming. They're on the same page there. But now when I am, when am I to provide for my own house too? So they work out a, an arrangement by which it would seem that Yaakov is destined to fail. And Levon jumps all over it. Sure. <laughs> too good a deal to pass up. Why go through all of this? He's been with Levon for 14 years. And in that 14 years, he's been taken advantage of. Next week, we're going to hear him uh, announce his plight. You know, I was in the cold. I suffered the loss. I took the brunt of the problems. I dealt with the bad issues. I gave you only the benefit of my service. And now you want to come and take everything away. It could be that what Yah was doing and allowing or even sending Yaakov to be under the tutelage, the environment, the home of Levon, is to reveal not just the shrewd overlording of Levon, but also to reveal the Esau inside of Yaakov. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, they're twins. And as much as you and I would like to think that we are mostly good, that we walk uprightly, righteously, with a pure and undefiled heart, that we don't have an ulterior motive about anything, that we can be trusted with uh, everything put in our possession, that we would never do anyone wrong, lurking under the surface somewhere is the Esau version of ourselves, the mirror image that cannot be trusted. Rabbi Shaul, the Apostle Paul, referred to this one as the man of the flesh. He even cried out, who shall deliver me from this body of death? This part of my humanity that gravitates toward fleshly pulls, that seeks its own way, that would even take the anointing, the calling, and the opportunities to grow the kingdom and use them for my own agenda and for my own exploits. Now, make no mistake about it. Everyone enjoys being applauded. Everyone enjoys a good hearty slap on the back at a boy. Uh, gold medals, acknowledgments, affirmations. These things have a positive influence to some degree, but there are, are also sometimes those that's all they're in it for. You know, I, I'll pastor this congregation until I can jump to that one because it's bigger, better, and more opportune for me. I, I will employ this one because they have a skill and a talent that's going to grow this place. That's what I need them to do for me. Rather, our calling and our anointings should be an umbrella under which those that need to be groomed and, and have time to mature and come up through the ranks and gain understanding and learn and have wisdom and mentorship be able to safely stand under and learn from us knowing all along that when their time comes, we're supposed to release them and let them go do what it is that the Father has called them to do. We grow people up, and then we place them and plant them where Yah wants them. We're, we're not taskmasters. Yaakov, if he had not been refined under the hand of Levon, he would have eventually become Esau. And when he meets Esau next time, 
it had been a war instead of a reunion. Shabbat Shalom to you, to your family, to all of you who gather with you. May the Shalom of Yah be upon you and may you find his face. Until next week, Shalom. Shalom.